Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Alienware Arena, North America, week six. We are here, both for Court Jester and, do you think Rapid is on the line? Rapid, how are you doing, dude? I am indeed. I'm doing really well. Uh, coming off of our Alienware Arena battlegrounds for the Europe region earlier on today, now back in here at uh, North America, ready to do even more Alienware Arena Battlegrounds action. And tonight, who are the teams we have tonight? All right, tonight on your left-hand side is going to be High Concentration. And on our right-hand side, the Re Unrestricted Revolution, which if you sound, say it and sound it out, it actually sounds a really solid name. But I do believe they're under the Unrestricted umbrella of teams. Yes, they are. Unrestricted, a very, very old uh, championship winning team. Uh, they are probably the first League of Legends team alongside of a picture of a goose and uh, haters that make us famous that were like the first big trifecta of League of Legends teams. They had a lot of, they, they had the previous curse lineup that has now gone on to include, you know, Liquid and Elements and a bunch of other famous League of Legends players. Now this is their B team, Revolution, who has actually gone through and actually winning tournaments of their own. Now they're obviously not winning, you know, like the IPLs, the MLGs, super huge tournaments, but they're winning, uh, they actually won Severity Gaming's Fall Frenzy this past weekend and have actually uh, won a Go For Lol, I believe. So uh, they're doing really, really great things and that's a Teemo that Arkan felt. Oh my goodness, Four Court Jester. We have a Teemo in our game. You know, they were alluding to that in the chat. Like, you know what? We resolve around Teemo. It's all about the global taunt that he brings to the table. But I kind of just dismissed it, saying, yeah, you know what? They're just they're just talking. They're talking strong. But no, there you go. They, they're manly to their word. Arkenfell picking up that Teemo. And uh, looking at it, Alistar getting through those bands. Hmm. Yeah, that's something we've actually seen a lot, not only in, uh, not so much major tournaments, but a lot in the Alienware uh, Battlegrounds. We've seen a lot of Alistars making it through, and there we go, picked up there. Uh, Manoob's going to take that down, and I think uh, it's either going to be Hucket or, I know their normal support is uh, UNR Forsaken. He's not here this time around, so we actually probably will have Hucket here uh, subbing in for him, but uh, another fabulous member of their team. Uh, looks like uh, the counter picks on uh, the blue team are going to be Graves Tarek, a super, super strong lane, and also a Lee Sin jungle. Really solid picks coming out. You know what? I was just watching one of those streams over there, and they had a roaming Tarek, and I was like, why don't we roam Tarek? I mean, it makes just so much sense. Stun? Shatter, ultimate, a little bit of power boost, but I don't know if we're going to see that here or not. Just making sure, yes, I do have my summoner blockers up, so teams, if you are listening, feel free to pick out your summoners. And, you know, I just did a little bit of a freak out. Rapid, you carried me very well, but my kitten just lost its first tooth. Aww. And it's all bloody, and I was freaking out, and I'm like, this had to have happened as soon as I started casting. Yeah. Well, so, as Thank you for I... going through with that with me. <laughs> Dude, you know what? I, I got you covered. I mean, I, I just finished working out by watching a lot of League of Legends, and so now I can carry you regardless of whether it's IRL or I in game, whatever the abbreviation for that is. But here we go. Next couple of picks coming out from Unrestricted Revolution are actually going to be an Oriana Nunu. So we thought we had strong picks there from high concentration. Uh, Oriana Nunu just as strong coming out for the purple team of UNR Revolution. And uh, if there's one thing I know about good guy Sem, it is that he plays an absolutely ridiculous Oriana. And that's uh, also, uh, they, they like to run a lot of Teemo, which they're showing us a lot of, a uh, little bit of here today so really excited to uh, see good guys him on Oriana as well as a Teemo picked up whether he is you know in any one of the uh, lanes that Teemo can go in but to round off the roster for a high concentration looks like so fancy is gonna grab Ari and then last but not least uh, JHK 112 is gonna be able to pick up an Irelia they haven't really revealed the top Lane for purple. It could be top lane Teemo, could be ATP Teemo, could be Teemo in a lot of different places. And there comes out the Cho'Gath. What do you think about that? Hmm, Alistar, Nunu, and Cho'Gath. All very adept junglers at the same time. Nunu can also support. Same as that Alistar. Or we could have a top lane Cho'Gath with a Teemo bottom. Either way, I'm looking at this, I'm noticing a distinct lack of a solid AD carry which kind of lets me know that maybe we're going to be seeing Teemo that bottom lane. 
Well, you know what? Here's the thing about uh, solid AD carry. You can run AD Oriana. Uh, there's a uh, there's a twenty there's a twenty five hundred Elo uh, player who's named only AD Oriana, who only plays AD Oriana, and it's twenty five hundred Elo. I am serious, and uh, I forget which server he's on. I think he's on EU West, but. Uh, yeah, there's that's a thing. And uh, look at Timo, and then you look at uh, Jelly Rat, who's actually grabbed out Nunu. Uh, the thing about Nunu is that he carries a steroid with him. So if you're playing an AD carry like, say, um, a Caitlyn that doesn't have her own innate steroid, then it's a really good idea to go ahead and give her um, a laning partner like Nunu. They can give her that steroid that she's lacking. Same thing here for uh, both Oriana and also for Timo. Neither one of them have that really big, like, vein like steroid or like Graves or. Uh, uh, Tristana, that big, huge steroid that makes them a monster later on. So you get that from Nunu, and that's a really great pickup here for UNR Revolution. All right, so it does look like teams are locked in, but Timo, Olaf, Oriana, I I don't know what to think about an AD Oriana. That just boggles my mind. But Jelly Rat, Nunu, and we do have that Alistar out there, and I'm hoping that uh, they change their summoners in the next few seconds. Otherwise, we're going to have a very interesting game on our hands. Two, one... Uh, is this, no smite. Is this a mistake? I don't know. He got it right at the end. <laughs> oh, snap. They changed it right at the very last second. They were not giving away their strategies. Not only are they running a smite on Hucket, they're going to be running Promote coming out there from Nunu. I am so excited to see this. All right, a little bit of background music to set the stage, but yeah, it does look like it is going to be that bottom lane support Nunu with a promote, something we are seeing more and more of in these highly televised, highly popular matches that hundreds of thousands of summoners are watching. But at the same time, yeah, phew, we did get off that smite for Alistar. So an Alistar jungle, very strong ganking potential. Very interested to see what he can bring to this. And I'm going to go with good guy Sam not being AD Oriana, but let's just confirm. Indeed. It is ability power, mana regeneration, and a little bit of magic penetration on the side as well. 2109, nothing really out of the ordinary. It will be business as usual. Now, on the flip side, high concentration, Lee Sin, jungle, counter jungle, excellent ganking potential, mana less, use of that energy. Should not be affected by blind from Teemo, but that would be in a perfect world. But we have seen some amazing plays from Lee Sin's in the past. You know, interestingly enough, Lee Sin running a very interesting uh, build. He really wants that moves, those move speed runes, but you have to adjust your runes to be able to fit in move speed on Lee Sin. A lot of Lee Sin's just go straight for that 15 AD because his ratios are ridiculous when you build attack damage on him. But uh, this time around, we're seeing uh, eight move speed uh, quintessences for Lee Sin. And then he's got attack speed blues, armor yellow, so that's pretty standard. But then attack speed and uh, split between attack damage and attack speed reds. So he's got a little bit of everything all over the board. Really interesting build here coming out from Lee Sin. We'll see exactly how effective that is. And he's also running 2190 on the mastery. He's usually with these junglers, you see a bit more defensive, but again, he does have the flash, he has the smite, you know, nothing really out of the ordinary there. But because of the attack speed and the extra damage with the 21 in offensive, I'm very curious to see if he's going to do a lot of counter jungling with this, because it does look like he's set up to kind of just, you know, a flurry of fists and just take down all the jungles and then get to the lanes or then go counter jungling. As I said, we have seen some really amazing plays in the past from these manaless junglers going all out countering, just trying to keep down the enemy jungle. And that enemy jungle being Alistar, if he can keep Alistar out of the picture, we're going to have a huge advantage come out for high concentration. Definitely, and really, if Alistar gets shut down, he has a limited window of time before he can become useless uh, if he just gets, falls farther and farther and farther behind, because pretty much without his ultimate, if he's behind, he can survive as long as his ult's up, but then it's not really going to look too good mm -hmm. here. But uh, it is unrestricted revolution versus high concentration in week six of the North American Alienware Arena Battlegrounds, and uh, we are looking to get into this game. No delay on the North American server, thankfully enough. We are into the loading screen yay loading screen always a good feeling to be into the loading screen especially those eu matches they give us such a scare like is it gonna work is it gonna work is it gonna work i don't know but it usually does which is good because that's the mark of uh, an excellent uh, programming company now we are into the skin war i'm looking at aurelia though smack dab in the middle i'm looking at that teleport 
You know what? Teleport, really interesting to bring on your top laners. Uh, traditionally, you know, you run Shen top lane and then you can teleport wherever you want for free because of Stan United. If it's not Shen, you need a little bit of added mobility so you can run that teleport top lane. Now, teleport really means that you lack the same kill potential as somebody who runs Ignite in their lane. And sure enough, we're looking at Manoob, he is running Ghost Ignite on a top lane Olaf. And so that's going to be a lot to deal with for Aurelia. Besides the fact that Aurelia can't walk into lane against Olaf without exploding immediately. So we are into the game. Welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I know there's a lot going on out there, but if you're watching this here with us, I certainly appreciate your attention and your dedication to League of Legends. And uh, here we go. Uh, it's going to be uh, Hellbent running Graves. Uh, I guess, uh, wow, my HUD resized itself, so I have to go through and do that. So I'll let you introduce the team's forecourt while I fix my overlays. <laughs> Not to worry, good sir. Left-hand side, high concentration, the HC blue team. We got Hellbound 24, Quan's Biatch, <laughs> Dawn of Legends 10, so fancy, and the JHK 12. You can see all five moving as a unit, all five with boots. And I did take a quick look at Tarek as we did start out this game. He does have boots and two wards, no potions, no fairy charm, and that is usually a, a good sign that they do want to invade. If they do go in on this Alistar and that Orianna, it could go extremely well for them. Quiet, quiet, poor court. They, they don't, they don't know. Hucket and Oriana are just sitting there in the <laughs> corner bush, wa waiting. I don't know. This could go really, really bad because I am pretty sure that uh, high concentration really wants to go in on this. Now on the flip side, unrestricted revolution here on the team red. Arkenfell, Manub, good guys, Sam, Jelly Rat, and Hucket. Now you can see that we saw no invade. I can slightly hear myself in the background. Not entirely sure if that's you or me. But uh, just as a quick note, uh, and nothing's happening. We're waiting for somebody to move now. If they did move in on unrestricted, it was Jelly Rat who was a little late to the party. He bought late. He didn't move until literally like 30 seconds ago. And it, again, it could have been very devastating. But high concentration, going to go for the invade. There's the stun on good guy Sam, and the first blood going to that Gray's high concentration. Alistar just sitting there by the walls, like hmm. Which way do I run to survive? Thankfully, he did pick the correct way, and there's nothing that little astronaut Teemo can do against this five-man invade. Yeah, there's a war drop there by Quans, and I already see a lot of play coming out here from the blue team. The teleport top lane from Aurelia, she's not wasting any time, and that's really one of the things that made it look really safe for Unrestricted. They were like, you know what, we have a really good shot at this because uh, nobody's invading because of how long they waited. And usually the top laner will go back past that time, and uh, Olaf uh, has already you know, farmed a couple waves, does have the level advantage solidly, but uh, is looking to come over here and is going to help out Hucket with red because, hey man, after that really, really rough start over by the blue buff uh, he's gonna need a little bit of something extra oh man I'm always so bad with this I uh, got everybody now in the right order so there we go we all matched up on the scoreboard and yeah I mean other than the first blood uh, nothing really too fancy going down I mean we got first blood I mean that that's that nothing we can really do about that but at the same time I'm looking top Olaf had to come and think, help out Alistar on that red I think Alistar is gonna die to double golems I don't think he can do double golems he has no blue, he has no mana, he's using health pots. He's gonna die if he doesn't move. Yep, you're right. He cannot do it. This is gonna put him so far behind. That level one kill got him out of the jungle and at the same time didn't give him blue. He didn't have any mana and he had to go through all his potions and all he has to his name is red. That's all and he that's has to his name. That's what you were talking about earlier on, uh, Sean, is that uh, the game progresses and uh, if you get behind, you're going to get left behind as it does. And that's exactly what's so key for Alistar uh, because, uh, like you mentioned, if he gets set behind early on, it's really, really going to hurt his effectiveness because really what's so scary about Alistar are those level 2 ganks and they just really didn't come. But uh, looks like we're having some issues as Hellbent24 leaves the game a little bit prematurely. And so we're going to have a quick pause while we <laughs> Victory wait. Victory celebration, you. drinks on Yay. me. Oh, wait, we're only three minutes in. Oh, I got to come back? Okay, sure. Yeah, that's exactly what happened with Hellbent there. But now, look, it says he reconnected. should get this going uh, in fairly short order. But also, while you were talking, I was taking a quick look. Auri now has blue. So Fancy has blue, which means Lee Sin has blue, Auri has blue. And this is going to be devastatingly hard for good guy Sem in the middle. 
Yeah, and so it's going to be hard in the middle. It's going to be hard in the uh, jungle. Uh, Unrestricted Revolution having a really rough time here. And I was actually talking to them a little bit before the game, and they were like, you know what? We're, this is going to be really easy. You're going to crush these. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not really. Not I'm going to call that but, the double uh, lift syndrome whenever we, that kind of thing happens. The double lift syndrome. Oh. Well, uh, apparently uh, they're about to ha find out exactly how difficult Pimbin is because it uh, looks like uh, we not only have no exhaust bottom lane, but a promote instead from Jelly Rat. And I was talking about before the game started exactly how interested I am at seeing exactly how effective this is. And uh, we're going to see on the next cannon minion wave, if they do decide to promote that, the uh, next cannon minion wave is coming up. If they drop that promote, they're looking for it to push in on an early turret and they could combine that with an Alistar gank but it looks like Huckett is top lane he's gonna come around on Irelia and uh, really as dominating as I thought Olaf would be on Irelia uh, it's not looking to uh, exactly uh, be effective quite yet now here we go Irelia goes in there uses her blade search she gets the reset but then misses it there the Q the W and it looks like Dawn of Legends with those red buff procs and from Huckett is gonna try to flash over the wall over here does she have flash available yes she does flashes over the wall and we'll get no. that that's a, oh, why would you flash over the wall? I don't know. Uh, the Olaf exact ghost, same thing I, going through my head, sir. The exact same thing. Yeah, Olaf has ghost, not flash. I mean, yeah. that one time you play against an Olaf and he flashes over the wall after you, and you're like, what? Uh, you're going to think all Olafs have flash, but not so this time. But that does give Manum a dominating position here in the top lane, so still a relatively effective gank. Yeah, I mean, it, it did it did its work. It got her to back off. Dawn of Legends sitting at 14 creeps to the 27 of Manub, and now Manub making it rain with those Thunderbolts. So, yeah, mission accomplished. We are getting ahead for that Olaf, but as you did say, it does look like they are going fairly passive in that top lane. That was the first potion popped for Irelia, and we still have boots 3 on Olaf. So, again, looking really, really passive. A lot of creep damage going to land here on top of uh, Dawn of Legends, but I'm not too sure if we're going to see uh, a kind of anything in that top lane in terms of a dive. Bottom lane, however, does look like Arkenfo. He did get hit by that exhaust and a great gank coming in from that lease and Nets Graves the second kill of the game. Yeah, and that's just the problem when you don't run exhaust bottom lane. Uh, you see Jelly Rat actually sitting there with uh, Promote, having used that on the wave I was talking about. Mid lane, it looks like a dive coming off from Ari. Good guys, M will go down. No! No! Oh my goodness, the cannon minion. Oh, <laughs> the cannon minion aggroed Good Guy Sam and took him down a single digit HP. <sighs> that was way, way, way too close. He's going to back off there, living strangely enough. So fancy, a turret shot away from death. Now Lee Sin's coming in there, looking to catch Sen backing. He sees Lee Sin there. Actually, probably would have been fine, but doesn't want to risk it. And now Lee Sin dominating the jungle of Alistar. Alistar just so far behind right now. No gold for fives for pick up a cloth armor. Can't gank, can't jungle. Really, really setting behind... Uh, uh, and Restricted Revolution, they're just uh, kind of starting, I mean, they had a rough start, so they're really trying to look to uh, kind of bring things back together. Indeed, it looks like there was an altercation top as well. Manub not looking so healthy, although he is chucking down his potions, has one more in reserve that I really a doesn't, but here comes Lee Sin with that red. Dawn of Legends going for the bait, but Manub, he's too tricksy for this. His spider senses were tingling like, I'm pushed up really far and Lee Sin just showed himself mid. I'm not gonna do this. He throws out the axe, finds nobody in the bush, realizes, oh right, I, I could do this for a little bit longer, but still the creep disparity in this top lane is still overwhelmingly in Olaf's favor. Yeah, so I can't talk enough about how clutch that was from Manoob. That was a perfect gank for Lee Sin. There is no way Olaf could have gotten away from that. His ghost is down. He might could have slowed people that, but that doesn't stop Lee Sin or Aurelia, both of whom have gap closers. So just, he recognized that. He's like, huh, you know what would be really awesome right now for them? If they gank me right now. So let's just back off, play it safe, and I can't talk enough about how much uh, that game sense just saved Olaf's life top lane. So Manoob definitely holding it down, and if uh, unrestricted, want some uh, you know a lane to come back from gonna be that top lane Arkenfell having died once bottom lane uh, and with no exhaust in lane he's really gonna have to pull out some moves here against Hellbent on Graves now I was curious to see if we were gonna keep up the aggression in the counter jungling maneuvers from high concentration but at the same time but top lane still exchanging blows and I did notice Alistar has his own blue bottom lanes going really deep into Jelly Rat and Arkenfell no exhaust ready for them this time blood boil plus the team movement able to get them out of in trouble but again Lee Sin showing himself into this bottom lane and 
you know, a lot of pressure again being put up. Despite a two kill lead from that pressure, it does look like high concentrations behind in gold. Well, yeah, you know, you got to look at that top lane like you were talking about earlier. Irelia having a lot of problems farming up there. Olaf's going to go back. Does he pick up a phage? He's working on it. He decides, you know what? Philosopher's Stone going to be a really great pickup, and I totally agree with that because Irelia, you really have to go some form of gold for five versus Olaf, preferably. Oh, no, Irelia. Ouch. Okay, so she's going to pick up dodge boots. Okay, the Doran shield, that's really big. Okay, I love the Dorans. Not such a big fan of the uh, the ninja tab eye. That's not going to help you against the slow from Olaf. And really, all Olaf needs is more opportunity to stay close to you and drop as much true damage as possible. Looks like Alistar wants to get a gank off mid. Going to get scouted out there by a ward, so so fancy. Going to stay safe for now, but uh, you need health versus Olaf. You need it as fast as possible, so you need phage and heart of gold, and that's not something that uh, Dawn of Legends really is going to be in range up for a while. Olaf sitting there wants the phage. Not quite enough gold for that, but with the ruby crystal, he is not moving from top lane, and he is looking to dominate. At the same time, those ninja tabby will do nothing against those lightning bolts. Then again, I don't think any boots are doing anything about those lightning bolts, unless they were made of rubber. But we don't have anything like that here. True damage will be falling from the sky in droves from Manu. And, you know, what can you do against an Olaf? How can you try to counter him out? It's really, you just got to get some early health. You really need to start stacking crystals, get some uh, Dorans, which we do see here. The boots, probably not so much. You need a helper against the, the follow-ups for sure, but we need a little bit more health here to deal with these true damage bolts. Interesting stat. When Lee Sin did those uh, wolves just now, he took, uh, he took was it 9 to 10 crits from them, which means that literally out of the uh, 17 auto attacks, 10 of those were crits. And uh, so, yeah, he took a little bit more damage. Always interesting to look at the random factors. Dying to wolves, never something you want to do. But an engagement top lane really puts things in favor of uh, Dawn of Legends. He's actually kind of turning things around. But now that we have Vicious Strikes engaged from a noob, just watch how much he's going to heal up off of this. And the spell vamp from his axes is going to be absolutely massive as well. But, uh, yeah, so he's actually sitting at almost 7 700 health versus the 750 from Dawn of Legends and now with Hucket up there scouting things out sees the uh, the ward there it's gonna kill that off and then walk away possibly looking to turret dive Aurelia if he loops around here and it looks like yep that is the plan that looks like uh, we're gonna have Manoob shove things into the turret and then an Alistar gank from behind it's not looking good from Dawn of Legends and let's see if they can actually get themselves a kill on the board here goes the ultimate from Alistar going in not exactly the farthest combo you can get but it will be enough to take her down realizing chances are slim she's gonna get out of this one just tries to fight it under the tower but so many creeps so much damage coming out and finally a kill on the board for unrestricted now I'm a little curious Hucket level 6 remember how he was so far behind he's now same level as Lee Sin plus an oracles yeah, so that's really exciting to see. Not only that, but uh, you look at the gold count, 2,300 here for uh, Alistar, only 2,100 for Lee Sin. So after an extremely rough start to the game, it's actually looking extremely promising here for Hucket in the jungle. So I'm actually uh, really impressed to see what we have going on here. It looks like an Ice Blast and a lot of pain going off onto Hellband, but Arkenfell takes a stun. He's going to take only a smoke bomb to the face. I uh, really thought there would have been a lot more punishment on Arkenfell. Arkenfell, but uh, you can see exactly how harass-based uh, Teemo is playing bottom lane. I think he's playing it more like a top laner, but unfortunately, the shroom in the bush reveals so fancy. Coming down from that top lane, another Terex Sun lands, but here is Hellbent knocking. Oh my goodness, Hucket actually knocked Hellbent out of Jelly Rats. Oh, now so fancy's going to go down, but so will Arkenfell. Uh, it looks like Terex will fall next, and there's just no damage between Jelly Rat and Hucket. Didn't have any cooldowns, and what? because what? Dawn of Legends showed up, <laughs> had to back what? out. Wait, she teleported to tower and not to a creep? I don't know, man. That's a little <laughs> bit dubious. You don't uh, want to I, teleport uh, in the middle of the team. But I don't know what I'm, to say against that. I really don't. I'm right there with you, man. <laughs> team I, I don't know what's going on. This Yay, is now a game much. of Minesweeper, and Dawn of Legends, you are failing at it. Unfortunately, not really hit that hard quite yet, so she's now down here, is, is going to hold out this lane. Does look like Lee Sin covering top while well, she is absent, but I'm very curious as to that teleport. It was just so far behind everyone. Yeah, it was just a little bit mistimed almost. I mean, uh, the positioning wasn't great, but, uh, you know, still enough to uh, take down the team, or take down... Uh, or be effective, push off uh, 
everybody off of Graves. I think that Graves uh, probably could have gone down, but it would have taken a long time because between Nunu and Alistar, that's just not a lot of damage. And really, I think that uh, as the game progresses, that's something that Unrestricted could struggle with, a lack of damage. You don't really have a, a lot of damage from Teemo until he gets that like super awesome BF sword. It looks like he could actually go for a Phage here, and that means that the damage is even lower. Uh, looks like Manoob top lane needs to get out of dodge. Aurelia returning there along with uh, Lee Sin. Lee Sin's been beaten and battered at top lane. <laughs> he does not have any health, and you saw Manoob just kind of bully him as they knew Dawn of Legends was bottom, so Manoob is absolutely massive right now. He's gonna, even though he has less health, he can just full combo Dawn of Legends right now. It's just not even funny. Yep, and again, just counter Olaf damage OP. You really need to stack some health, and Lee Sin finally getting himself a ruby crystal. All he had was boots and that wriggles and wriggles is not going to do anything up against lightning bolts coming from the sky. Either way, 3-3 as the score. A great exchange in the bottom does put uh, Unrestricted level with the kills and really does further ahead the goal. And you're saying even kills didn't have the best to start. Unrestricted, how are they ahead in goal? It's all about those creeps. Look at this bottom scoreboard. 112 creeps for this Olaf upstairs as my camera goes back and forth between all the action. <laughs> 126 middle against the 95 Ari, and then 111 Teemo against this 100 Graves. Either way, creeps plus gold pretends, they do add up over time, and that's where we're seeing this gold increase over top of high concentration. Yes, so uh, really gold for fives also ticking away. You got uh, one, two, three, four on uh, Unrestricted. And once again, Huckett coming from behind. Going to get the Q, the W, and it looks like Manoob coming on with the damage. The Ignite's going to pick it up. And once again, they're just completely diving Aurelia over and over. Manoob just, uh, you know, if it's not big enough, make it bigger. And uh, just really trying to snowball this top lane out of control. Looks like that's about where it is. I'd say when you're, you know, getting two kills off of diving, Aurelia under turret. That's pretty, pretty over. Now, at the same time, it's not just random happenstance that Alistar is coming up there and they just happen to have the right conditions to dive. That's been the plan for Olaf all along. He's been feeding the creeps into the tower, constantly pushing the lane, putting her on the back foot, and every time she comes up to see us, lightning bolt. Gets her down under half health, and we do know that with that ultimate, Alistar can tank, you know, five, six, maybe even seven tower shots, and that is plenty of time to take out Aurelia under that tower between the two of them. So, very masterfully done. I really do like that strategy. Looking at Jelly Rat, he did use out that flash and the blood boil. We did have an ignite go down on top of him. A little preemptive. Not going to be a kill for him, but Olaf now absolutely dominating. As you said, he is a monster. Oh man, picking up that giant's belt, as you guys know, Undertow scales off of, or rather, Vicious Strike scales off of that maximum health, so it's going to be giving him an extra 25 damage every time he uh, activates it, and that's just going to start to be way, way, way too much for Dawn of Legends to handle. Comes back in the lane with as few health items as possible against an Olaf that does true damage, so I don't know if that's necessarily the best idea, but uh, Manoob is uh, really, it's sort of like under Restricted re revolution is thinking, you know, it's in Manoob, we trust, we're going for it, and uh, <laughs> Alistar just autos the word once and walks away. Mm -hmm. Now, Alistar, he hasn't uh, he hasn't died. He has made good use of that Oracle. He is denying a lot of ward vision here on high concentration. In between, an Oracle's denying all that vision, it does allow these Alistar ganks to happen. At the same time, it's also making sure that they do not know where that Alistar is. And that is a big factor, because again, he is such a great ganker. Coming up top, again, has that red buff, forces out that flash, but mission accomplished. If you can force out that flash, just come back in 30 seconds. It's, she won't have it. <laughs> Two, and look at this wave top lane. Manoob is sitting on like three full waves just left to himself to see S, and that is how much he's been denying from Aurelia. I mean, you love to push waves into turrets, but oh, there's the Oriana going off onto so fancy. A good guy, Sam, is going to be able to dodge one. Oh my goodness. Every single Foxfire almost landed, but the two actually aggroed creeps, and then only one hitting Oriana. She was able to flash out of there and uh, make it out alive. So uh, good guy, Sam's going to stay alive for a little bit 
bit longer, but mid lane and bottom are still going extremely well here for high concentration. I mean, you got to give it to these guys. They are putting on a really impressive showing. There's the promote minion. Going to be looking to take down this turret. That minion has a 2100 HP. Yep. This turret does not stand a chance. <laughs> Nobody in the game at this point. Well, maybe Olaf. Yeah, Olaf has 2500, but just now, since he did get that giant spell, 2100 hit points on a creep, on a creep that you cannot d deter from that turret. That is something really difficult, and look at it, blood boiled to boot. As people here in chat are chanting, Charles, if you've ever seen any of my stuff, we call promoted minions Charles. He is doing some <laughs> fantastic, it's three on three of Reese's two down there. That's exactly what this is. Manu, Pretty much. not surprisingly, getting another kill top. Might even be able to go two on one against this Lee Sin. Is gonna pop that ghost, he does have the blue buff. Oh, the undertow not exactly gonna connect, but oh, he did pop that ghost. I really wanted to see him continue to chase that because we do have Alistar and Orianna in that top lane while Bottom takes the dragon. Wow, so just plays all across the board there from Unrestricted Revolution. And you see So Fancy coming up top lane, all off in a little bit of trouble. He's trying to juke, he does manage to dodge that and drop so much damage. He's gonna die, but not after taking out Ari. Huckett does not care. He's going in deep after Lee Sin. Not really the greatest idea because Lee Sin's gonna be able to make it back. Raid's coming up from bottom lane to top lane. It's gonna be able to uh, kind of stay up here and sort of try to stem the tide, but is it going to be effective? Yes, turret will stay alive there. And uh, really, you gotta give it to her, Relia, for keeping that turret up. She's sacrificed her lives several times but hey man her turret's still alive but uh, with that dragon fallen and a massive shroom fortress going up there for um for uh, Arkenfell bottom lane as Astronaut Teemo finally picking up his BF sword. He really wishes Entropy was in this version of the game instead of in just Dominion and uh, so he could pick up that. Man, can you imagine Entropy on Teemo in Summoner's Rift? That would be absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, we have had several iterations to the game to make sure that we have as fair play as possible. I remember the days of the innervating locket. Thank you, oh, Guardsman Bob, even. for oh. destroying our dreams. Oh. Uh, <laughs> either way, Six to four as the score, about six thousand gold ahead, unrestricted, even after dropping that first blood, have not given an inch in this game. In fact, they have se uh, have one tower to their name. I was going to say several. It's not quite the case quite yet, but I mean, we have done work. This top lane tower still standing a little unsteady. Mid lane tower not exactly looking so great as well. And without this dragon, uh, you know, dragon coverage, blue team's like, oh, all right, well, I guess we're not going to do that dragon. We're going to see if we can take out this Teemo, but the army of shrooms just delaying that push and he gets out scot-free. Oh wow, he actually did flash that last Terex stun, just wanted to make sure 100% that he could stay alive, and it, oh my goodness, this is so smart here from Unrestricted. Arkenfell staying bottom actually to defend this turret, 1v4, yeah, the global Teemo top definitely engaged there as all five members of uh, high concentration concentrate relatively highly in that bottom lane. They're going to be able to take down one turret, but middle lane, it looks like high concentration losing a little bit of a base race. They're going to lose one, two, and three turrets for one. And it does not look like Super Cannon Minion Charles is going to stop now. Going to go on to the first base turret of the game, and it will not live very much longer. A blood boiled Super Minion. Holy cow, that guy that is damaged. The middle <laughs> turret will fall there. Ari comes up. The turret does not stay up, and now she's forced to jump out of there. Her ult's down, and so is the first base turret of the game going to Unrestricted Revolution. Look at this Charles just going to town on this inhibitor. Just chunked it for 200 hit points by itself but yeah i do agree not the best of calls from high concentration a three for one turret exchange and they four didn't even get the no it was they took, uh, they one two three, three four for one my goodness you're quite right four for one and they didn't get the teemo kill not only did they not get that well they avoided the empire play in the bush but uh unfortunately uh, unrestricted Unrestricted, not able to quite pick that one up, but uh, it does look like Huckett's actually coming in here to sort of just like stand in lane and be like, what's up, I'm, I'm over here, I'm kind of chilling in your lane, but uh, not something that a high concentration can really do about. I mean, they made a play bottom, that was great, but oh wow, Lisa jumps in the bush expecting to only find one member of Unrestricted. There's the you know, huge Oriana all combined with massive damage coming out from Olaf. Nobody dead quite yet, but it looks like we could see somebody in that category. Lisa going to make it out with just a few slivers of HP, not so lucky. For Graves or Aurelia. They will both fall a double kill coming out for good. Guy 7 Manoob will make it out alive once again. All right, yeah, Quan's Biatch not going to be so lucky. Gets off that clutch heal as good guy Sam 
does go down so fancy looks like he's going to be living uh, skin of his teeth either way an extremely good uh, turnaround for unrestricted as you did say I don't think our Leeson as soon as he jumped into that did not expect the whole team to be there but you get what you, you paid for and now with three more deaths to their name another turret and so fancy just have to go back so there's no defense at all either way unrestricted came out far ahead in these last two minutes Interesting Oriana build there from good guy Sam who did pick up a double kill in that fight actually going tank Oriana picks up as much health as physically possible sitting at 2800 HP and when you compare compare that to what Olaf's sitting out it's only about three to four hundred below him so uh, it's just really really tough guy to deal with on a uh, good guy Sam's build maybe looking for a death cap or chalice I know a lot of Oriana's these days love to go chalice of harmony into Athene's holy grail but uh, not so for good guy Sam he's like you know what I really just wish I never died and unfortunately he did die in that last fight but did pick up a double kill to make up for it so just a massive amount of health on this team you look at Timo Timo's building frozen mallet after bloodthirster you got a frozen mallet Shirelia's on Olaf you have massive health stats on Oriana as well as a Shirelia's on Nunu just so much beefiness on uh, unrestricted revolution they are not gonna die in a hurry that's for sure I'm looking at some of the gold comparisons, and it's just not even fair. Looking at Olaf, 8,800 to the 42. <laughs> that really has. He is doubling her in gold gain in this match, ladies and gentlemen. Doubling. Jungle, not nearly as unfair, and neither with the mid or the bottom matchups, but still, it's a consistent 1 to 3,000 gold ahead per character here for unrestricted now they do have unrestricted doing a little bit of a barren play do we know about it we have absolutely no ward coverage and that is not going to be an announcement to the team although they are going to find them here in the jungle notice hey why do you look a little bit spikier than normal the Shirelia is coming in with the snowballs is going to force out the so fancy a uh, uh, foxfire rush and she is not going to get out of that look at that oriana ball just doing a work a double kill for them is going to go straight here into this inhibitor and I gotta say capitalization seems to be unrestricted middle name here oh my goodness I don't even know what to say that was so much damage I saw Nunu trying to get the slow off and I was like okay uh, you know his ultimate's gonna be able to slow them down pretty well and everybody's just gonna get out but then Oriano pulls everybody back into it so you get fully charged absolute zero on top of massive damage from the Oriano good guy Sem comboing that up with Nunu's ultimate just oh my goodness you know Jelly Rat not bringing an exhaust was a little bit rough for Arkenfell to deal with but having that promotes paid off several times and it looks like it's about to pay off once again, it's Charleston here busting off this turret. He's got blood boil. He's got massive damage. Dawn of Legends looking to come in there and get some damage done. Jelly Rat forced to back off. He's super low, but uh, nothing beats as low as Quan's and Dawn of Legends are both dead. The lowest of all HPs. Charles triumphs once again against that turret. Clears out the minions. The uh, GG is called from a Harkenfell. A little bit ahead of time. And oh my. My goodness, Leeson exploded, and so did the Nexus, giving the victory to Unrestricted Revolution. Now, let's just take a quick second here to think about the strategy. We didn't have that solid AD, and so we did get ourselves a Teemo. Teemo, however, doing extremely well in that bottom lane, gets himself 250 increased by the end of the game. He had a new new support, so Blood Boyo, that's a lot of poison flying in your face, but that's not even the key to it. It's all about the Blood Boiled promoted minion it just kept relentlessly pushing down buildings and if you think about it that's all league of legends is it's just tower defense you take out the towers you take out the nexus you win heroes are irrelevant i really like it you know, blood boiling that minion. I've seen a lot of. Um, uh, I saw an AD Nidalee uh, go bottom lane with a Nunu, and it worked really well because they had double buffs for their promote minion. And I don't know if you're if you're familiar with eighty thousand attack speed, but that's what it looks like when you use the Nidalee heal plus the Nunu uh, blood boil on a promoted <laughs> minion. Man, Charles was going off, but this time around it was just blood boil. It was extremely effective at not only shoving down turrets, but that huge play that's. Uh, 
uh, well, I guess the play that High Concentration tried to make during the middle of the game when they set five people bottom just to, you know, engage in that global taunt that Timo was emanating for the entire game. Took out the turret, but lost four in return. And from there on out, it's all downhill for High Concentration as a very high concentration of unrestricted revolution players shoved down that middle lane, took out the, uh, well, first base turret, and then followed that up by taking a Baron and then ultimately winning the game. So they will go up one more game here. I think they're actually sitting at... Uh, three and one right now. I'm not sure exactly what their record is here in the Alienware Arena Battlegrounds, but they have successfully uh, defended their honor here, taken out high concentration and uh, gone on to win the game. So congratulations to them for uh, picking up the win. Yeah, definitely well deserved, especially after that rough start. Had high hopes for high concentration after just watching that Alistar. Remember, level two could not even kill golems, but man, did he ever bounce back with spirit. 8.1 thousand gold in the end, really far eclipsing Lee Sin, who eventually did get himself a gold for 10 in the end. It was just the... the Heart of gold. Wow, I'm looking right at it and it's like, derp. Yeah, but either way, unrestricted, very well deserved on their part. And that means that this week's Alienware broadcast is now done for North America. Both EU and NA will be available on my YouTube, youtube.com slash jester. And that means that I need to start exporting those. Next week, next Thursday, same time, same place, right here, we will have week seven matches. And I believe after week eight, we do get the extra finals. The best team standings go head to head for uh, I think it's what 200 to 500 dollars something like that it's some kind of prize but either way that's why they're playing it's a lot of experience to get a little bit of cash at the end if you do well and looking at teams like this we could very well see in a year from now like the next TSM you know what? This is where big names started up in the small tournaments and uh, Alienware Arena. Actually, a fairly large tournament by uh, the number of teams who have joined it. So doing well in this, definitely nothing to sneeze at. So uh, Unrestricted Revolution move on with another win under their belt and uh, are one game closer to that championship. So uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I know there's a lot going on today as far as League of Legends is concerned, but if you stayed here and you've watched Four Court Jester and myself, then thank you very much for stopping by, supporting esports just a little bit more. If you want to check me out, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Rapid Transit 24-7. And also check out my Facebook. Go ahead and throw it a like if you want. It's Facebook.com slash Rapid Casting. Four Court Jesters, Four Court Jester, absolutely everywhere, which makes it a lot easier than all of my random stuff. But thanks for watching nonetheless. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And like Four Court Jester said a little bit later, uh, I mean a little bit earlier, you'll be seeing us right back here next week for week seven of the Alienware Arena Battlegrounds. All right, guys, have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Enjoy League of Legends, and make sure that you come on back next week. Forgo Jester and Rapid, signing off.